right, so welcome back to the show. Super excited to have Tyler Devereaux on the show. Hey, Tyler, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Jason? Doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Psyched to have you here. And Tyler is managing partner of MF Capital Partners, a privately held multifamily investment company, has been investing in real estate for over 15 years. At 21, he acquired his first student rental property, quickly understood the potential of the industry and never looked back. Controls over 2,000 apartment units through five different states, valued north of 200 million. He's a CEO and co-founder of Multifamily Mindset, an education company that provides new and seasoned investors training and support they need to acquire multifamily properties. He's trained over thousands of new and seasoned investors to acquire multifamily properties, maintains a positive growth mindset, and lives a rich, full life, teaching, helping, and inspiring others in your true passion. Tyler now lives in Maui, Hawaii with his wife, Brittany, and their two beautiful kiddos, Paxton and Marley. Well, Tyler, man, if people hear this, hey, buying properties here, living in Maui, right? Fantastic. So talk to us about the evolution of you getting into your multifamily journey. What was really that light bulb that went off and said, okay, here we go. And what was that next step for you? Yeah, great question. Great question. Um, I don't I, you know, as far as where it started, I've always just been super curious about wealth and how to grow it. And it's, it's you know, I, I believe that some of the struggles and the trials and the things that you go through ultimately are, are what are what drive you and create this this vision, this these goals and this direction. Even if you don't know, you know how you're going to do it. That's really ultimately what happened, ma'am. I have a mom who's amazing. She's a single mom, and I have a dad who's a great dude. You know, he's a great dude, but he, um, you know, made a couple mistakes and you know moved out of the country and. Uh, ultimately what that made me do is just become obsessed with time with family. And I wanted to make money. I wanted to provide in all aspects, certainly, but uh, I wanted to, I never thought at the expense of my family. Right. And so really that experience just continued to drive me to look for different avenues, different resources. You know, I started a web business, then did some single family flips, wholesales, that kind of stuff, but all very active, you know, it took my time and time was these like, that's the most important driver for me. And so uh, I became, how, how it all started for me when I, when I found out about it, it was right before I became a dad. Uh, and, the, and dude, the only thing, Jason, the only thing that I see your picture behind you, you know, you got your three, ki three kids, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. I mean, just the only thing I ever knew I wanted to be was a dad, but so I was so pumped when I, when I found out about it. But I was terrified because like I, my life was not balanced at that point at all. I just, I, I was just trying to figure stuff out. And very soon after that, I ran into my partner now, his name is Ryan Woolley. Uh, in the airport, he told me that he had learned about how to acquire apartment buildings. And he was not my partner then. Like we just were acquaintances. We knew, you know, we knew each other. And it, I was baffled by it, dude. So I went to an event, learned about it and dove in. And I'm so grateful. You know, there's tons of challenges and it's a struggle and it's hard, but it's like, like dude, it's been a huge blessing to me and my family and, you know, to allow me to, to do live here in Maui, you know, I I'm very grateful for it for sure. So, what, what has been, I don't know, we can get into, I was going to say, we can get into the nitty gritty details, whatever you want to, but I want to preface yeah. it with, you know, it's just a journey to get there. So any other questions, man, we'll get into as many nitty gritty as you want to. Sure. I love that. And so what's been one of the advantages from, and I, I assume from uh, your talk track here, you're not investing in, in Hawaii for the apartment buildings. Maybe you are. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But what has been one of the advantages of, of living in Maui and setting up your multifamily investment firm? So I do not invest in Maui. And there's zero advantages of living in Maui on the investment side. <laughs> I feel like there's zero. Well, you know, I take it back. Uh, Maui helps me live a positive and just grateful mindset, man, uh, which helps me in every aspect of my life, you know, not just yeah. my business, but my life. So when I started the business, though, I didn't live here. You know, I, I lived in D.C. and then I moved to Austin, Texas, when all this was starting to build and grow. And that was a lot. That was a different ballgame because, you know, we started to acquire properties in Texas and then in Alabama and the Carolinas and uh, it was a lot easier to get to those properties from Austin than, you know, from here in Maui. So I was not very many advantages from being out here now, but I'll tell you, it was a goal that my wife and I had had, dude, are really from the, uh, for the longest time. 
to yeah. live on an island with the kids, unobstructed time. And then it turned into, a, you know, our full time spot. But uh, I was I'm sure it helps you structure your time, though. Right. And now now you really I have to choose the time that you're going to a property. You have to choose your moments. I'm sure I'm sure on that side, from the advantage of, of finding the uh, right partners to work with, it's it's added dividends. You know what, man, you just nailed it, actually, because, you know, I said there's no advantages, but I'll tell you what it forced me to do. You, you, I feel like you just nailed that. It forced me to I knew that this is what I wanted to live here. But I also knew in order for me to do that, I once again would have to be very structured with time and I would have to be I'd have to build a team, a team of amazing people that could, you know, help multiply the efforts. And that's exactly what this has forced me to do. And man, we build an amazing team. An amazing team that now, you know, yes, I still go tour the properties and yes, I still go see them and I, you know, check in on them. But man, I have a, a team that's backing me that, I mean, they do uh, so much of it to just make, just keep on top of everything. And it's forced me to grow to, to do that. But that's also allowed us to scale to the point that we're at now, which is amazing. What has been some of the key team members you've brought on to allow you to continue to grow to this level of success? Great question too. Um, so it was me, my, me and my partner, Ryan first, who started it all. And we formed a, a, a true partnership. Like we were, we, we formed a true partnership knowing that we would partner with other operators to, in the beginning to help us scale and also learn. Like I want to learn from as many people as possible. And so what we started to do is partner with different, different operators with different strengths, learn from their experiences, scale and grow. The first team member we brought on was, um, was, really an admin to, to help with stuff, like just a, an admin to help just process, you know, investor requests and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, subscription docs and communication. Um, but then that, so that scaled quickly. And then we brought on uh, and, and somebody to help with the capital raise. We brought on somebody to help with underwriting. We brought on somebody to help with, you know, asset management. And we've scaled, you know, in a, in a crazy way. But one of the most important key team members, in my opinion, was getting a team member and delegating some responsibilities and realizing that they did it better than we did. Like they did it better because that was their one focus. Their one focus was to do that. And they mastered it. And then we brought in somebody else, you know, and their main focus was to raise capital as an example. And they freaking were better at it than we were. And that it just helped me understand that I don't have to be the best at everything. I have to surround myself with people that, you know, have that, that, that can do it better than I do and trust that they'll be able to, to do those kind of things. Give you know, it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those pieces here where it's so difficult when we're so used to being so actively involved in every piece that it's hard for us to just like take our claws out of just trying to do every piece, even though it, it causes us not to get everything done that needs to be done. Right. Just to give up that, that, um, ability to allow someone else to come into our world and handle something. But the second you do, right. And always that realization where you, if you have that good team member who comes on, you're just like, should have done this forever ago because That's you just so realize true. what it does for you to allow you to continue to, to move forward. Right. And how, how you've actually not only held you back, but any of your partners back because you were just trying to do too much. And I get it. There's a, that, yeah. that evolution of having to, having to learn and figure things out and how to be potentially the, the person who can, could help that team member to come on. But it, I I've seen that in my business before many times, right. Where you're just like, ah, you know, like, okay, good. We did it now, but what in the fact were we waiting on here? So but you know what's crazy like, though is you're you're so right and it's like but sometimes we beat ourselves up on that like we're doing too much we're doing too much we beat mm -hmm. ourselves up but really like we don't know it's too much until it's too much you know yeah. like that's let's see it's just an identifier it's this gauge you never know what's too much or too little until you hit that point so yeah. you hit that point and then you're like okay it's time to delegate and then you delegate and you're like wow there's so much more potential here and that's i, I believe one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give your listeners is to have an abundant mindset. Now, mm. That abundant mindset is to know that, I mean, bringing people on, partner, whether those are partners, employees, whatever, some people look at that as lost revenue. Well, I'm going to lose money because I'm splitting profits. No, it's not how that works. Yeah. Delegation may mean, you know, uh, giving up money in the short term, but it's going to make you way more money in the long term. And it's going to have a better quality of life in the long term as well.
you know, is that, that uh, saying that always comes about, would you rather 0% of no deal or 50% of one deal? Right. And it's like, it, when you think of it like that, you're like, yeah. And, but sometimes we're stopping ourselves because we're trying to, we want to just get more, but in fact, you're losing out on so many opportunities that come and just, it's, it's beneficial when, when, when there's so many people involved because there's, there's more to, to win more risk, of course, but more, more potential reward for everyone to share and grow their potential futures. So, so we look today at the landscape of what we see out there. You guys are doing a ton of action. How, how is your business um, evolving to match current states uh, of we'll call affairs, for lack of a better word, but, but the current macro environment, just how uh, the pricing models, how are you looking at things differently today? Yeah, so it is a crazy market right now. You know, you have, first off, we're, we've been exiting some properties and then rolling them over. So right now we're exiting... Uh, a whole portfolio in the Columbia, South Carolina market. Uh, it's about 83 million. And we've seen massive returns on those things, on those properties. It's been awesome. Um, and, you know, those have been coupled with obviously the market growth. But now, now you look at both sides, right? So you look at the exit side, and you're looking at the buying side, and you're like, okay, so what, where are we going to take that money and scale and grow to? And you see so many people out there that are, buying off of speculation and buying off of continued, you know, just that the market's going to continue to grow. And I believe that it will continue to grow. Like we have a, an affordable housing shortage, man, but things will also continue to change within, you know, interest rates. And, uh, you know, if that happens, then cap rates will start to, you know, increase. Well, in my opinion, I'm absolutely ecstatic about that because what we did when we, when we came in, is people, when we came in in 2015 or 2014, I guess, is when we started, and people were telling us at that point, hey, man, the market's going to correct. Hey, the, you know, there's, be careful, you're about at the top. You know, I don't know if this is the time. I mean, and if, I just look at that, and if I would have listened to that guidance, I mean, all that I would have missed out on. So it's buying, but it's buying strategically. And it's knowing that coming in, I'm going to buy uh, off of speculation. No, I'm going to buy off of cash flow and I'm going to buy off of value adds that I can control controllables. Um, but just get yeah, smart, you know, buying smart. That's what we're doing. You know, I always come back to this conversation I had with a friend in, you know, 2017, he was saying that, you know, we're on a bubble, everything's going to burst and he's been sitting on the sideline, right? And you think about all the action you've taken, all the action I've taken, just the ones that the, my friends around me, right? There, there's been so much action taking because you, you can buy in each market, but just like you said, like the, things are going to evolve, things are going to change, your strategy is going to change, it's going to adapt, right? And um, you, we are, we're in a shortage. And is there a runway ahead of us? Yes, in some light, but you have to be market specific. Are we going to see 15% rent growth every year? Probably not before we price out, you know, all of our renters here who are working potentially at Walmart, you know, and maybe their hours get downsized a bit, but you have to look at how things will help and hurt because we do go into a downturn. You know, there's, there's different things, right? Will there be more opportunities by asset potentially, but then maybe capital will, will be a little more standing on the, on the sideline waiting for something to change. So changing, there's always the time to buy. However, we have to look at the parameters and how, how, the, how the box is going to ship for us to look at that. So that, that's fantastic. Are there, are there certain yeah. markets that you look at here um, or changing your market dynamics? In Columbia, it's got, you know, a ton is happening there. Um, where do you look now for opportunities? Guys, it seems you're, you're in a number of different states. So are you sourcing opportunity first and then and, and state second? Or are you going state first, opportunity second? State first, state and market first, and then opportunities. I, yeah, I believe we can source. I believe you can source opportunities in any market, but you have to be strategic with the markets you're buying into. So Columbia is an example. I mean, we. What, I want to get into a market early, you know, so we're looking at market stats all the time to just kind of bring this question back in. You, you said we have to be market specific, and I totally agree with that. So we're looking at the economic factors within that market. You know, I, I'm looking at a market that, has maybe they've had some stagnant job growth and then all of a sudden they see an uptick. Okay, what's causing that uptick? Let's do some research. What's causing that? Is there different incentives that are being offered all of a sudden? Is there different government resources that are there? Is there different corporations that are moving in or other corporations gonna move in around them? And that's what we saw in Colombia, And that's why we were able to beat the rush into Colombia. And this is why we're, we've been able to grow in such a rapid way uh, so quickly within that market. Um, is because now the competition comes in and it it uh, it drives all of our values up, everything up because cap rates compress. 
And so, you know, we were talking about this earlier where it was, you know, cap rates will continue to, will start to, to rise as interest rates lower, or sorry, as interest rates rise, cap rates follow, right? But that's a beautiful thing because like we came in in, you know, 2014, 2015 and cap rates, we were buying at a, you know, a seven or an eight cap around there. And even that people, you know, and sometimes even six, and even that people yeah. were like, oh, that's, that's, that's a little bit scary. But then those cap rates have compressed and our values have grown, right? Well, now as, as we have this shift and now as cap rates grow again, awesome. Now we buy again at that point and then they go back to compress and then we, we ride that same wave again. It's, it, yeah. Fear stays on the sidelines where we're, we're working strategically to come in. And I would much rather make a mistake out of, you know, action than just inaction, just staying there, you know? Yeah. So, so we're always looking at market demographics. Where's, you know, we want to buy where people are, but we also want to buy where they're, where they're going, right? Where are those migration trends happening? Uh, and just trends period. Yeah. I'm sure you, you look at the same things, you know, uh, household formations, job growth, where people are moving to, why are they moving there? How are they buying different things? Are they buying, are they renting? Why are they doing those things? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's fantastic. And if you think about it, like that's where you want to be in a place where people are going to be, but something's not going to take them out. That's an outlying event, right? So you're looking at the markets like Columbia, South Carolina. I don't know all the job dynamics, but there's not one party just driving, right? So it's not like a steel town or a military town where something, some catastrophic event happens and all of a sudden they lose 8% of their, of their work uh, opportunity, right? So, you know, we're, where we are in Tennessee the Kentuckys, the Georgias, et cetera, you know, there's multiple employment drivers, right? And that helps you carry when, when things happen here, you know, if you have UPS, FedEx, GE, uh, you know, um, Churchill Downs, um, you know, Amazon plant, you have all these different drivers here together. They, they can help, help burn in the loss if one of these potential um, companies has had some kind of downtick, right, in, in their operation. That's exactly it. Yeah, it's so important as you look forward at your business to, to do this. And so pretty interesting on that part from the model. I'd love how you're doing this, of course, from Hawaii. And so for anybody who who is thinking about changing locations um talk give give a, a piece of advice for for how what was the first thing you did when you moved to maui in terms of your multifamily business yeah um first off i would say for anybody who is i think it's why you're moving locations because i'll i'll, I'll, I'll the first, the first off, the first reason that we moved to Maui, we, we didn't want, we weren't planning on living here full time. Well, my wife sold me first on we're going to live here for a year, unobstructed time with kids before they get into school. Because one of my definite major purposes, my driving factor, is time with family. And it's, it just drives me, you know. And uh, so this is what I've been working up to for so long that so it's like okay, we're going to spend a year and, and do that. But then that turned into. Uh, you know, we're going to live here forever. And I'll tell you though, looking back at, it, I procrastinated that move to Maui for a while. And I moved, I, I procrastinated it because in my mind, it was like this, dude, it was like, well, man, I got tons of opportunities coming. What, like maybe, may, what if we waited just one more year, then I'd be even, even in a better position. But in reality, man, we gotta, you gotta go with where, what brings purpose and value into your life. And what's so I think too many people just don't make those decisions because they're scared of what the repercussion is. When in reality, no decision is finite, man. You can yeah. always pivot. You can always grow, but you'll always regret it if you don't make the decision. So if there's something that's driving you to move to a different location, to take your family to a different location, to experience something new, do it, do it. Um, and I'm going to tie that back in here in just a second and experience that I just recently had. But the first thing that I did, man, when we, when we moved out here, well, even before we moved out here was make sure that my team members, um, that we had a clear line of like, Hey, this is what I'll be doing. This is where the changes will, will come. Obviously it's a big time difference. So, Hey, these are the things that I can do. This is the things that, you know, you can focus on and, and just make sure that we have these clear, like, this is what we're going to be doing. And this is how the changes are, but also understanding that once I get out here, then that's when we're really going to see what's going to happen. You know, how, yeah. how can we pivot? How can we grow? And just know that the minute that we stop making changes, making the changes isn't the bad thing. It's when you stop making changes. That's when you should start to worry. So knowing uh, that, you know, it's always growing and evolving. Yeah. Uh, 
Well said. You never know unless you try, man. So this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. Thank you for all the feedback and guidance you've given, especially about your move out to Hawaii. You know, just there, there's so much to take and just taking the leap and then taking that next step to figure out what's that next thing I need to figure out, right? And sometimes that's the biggest thing you need to do is to go do something, stop thinking about it because the, the inaction is never going to get you to the result, right? So well done. So congrats on all your success to continued success. And for everyone listening, what's the best way to learn more about you, your company, and all the events you're doing? Yeah, so we have two. So first off, you hit me up on social media. Just Tyler Devereaux uh, is my handle on all of them. Uh, you can hit up. We have two companies. We have our investment company. Uh, this is Multifamily Capital Partners. And then we also have our education company which is the multifamily mindset and uh, the education company. So you can look up both of those websites, both of those socials. You know, we have a big event coming up uh, here in uh, April, April 8th and 9th. It's a networking event. It's our you know annual networking event. We have tons of different operators there. Uh, we'll have, you know, keynote speakers too, like Ed Milet and Eric Thomas that are there. Uh, it'll be a great event it's in Vegas. Um, so we'd love to see anybody there, but um yeah, social is probably one of the best ways to hit me up. But but I'll I'll tell you, and we'll end with this, man. You know, we talk about decisions, and we talk about uh, nothing being finite. And that education company that we started was uh, it was a huge decision. It was a, it was a, I was nervous as hell. I literally was so nervous to start it and to grow it, and like, is this the right decision? Because that's from here too. Right now, we're branching into more things, and um the guidance that I got and uh, somebody come over from my church and tell me, uh, you know, say prayer with me. And they said, whatever decision you decide will be the right decision. So they said, yeah. And they, yeah. you know, they, they leave and they walk out and I was like, well, what the shit? What's that? No, you're supposed to tell me what decision to make, you know, but that <laughs> night I said, what you just said, which is, that's fantastic. I was in bed and I was like, man, this is one of my major drivers also is giving back, man. I believe that we experience fulfillment two ways by growing or giving. And I've been able to grow a ton with the investment company that's impacted my family's life a ton. And now I can experience fulfillment by giving. And if, if either direction is going to work, then man, I'm going to go with the direction that's going to bring value and fulfillment and purpose into my life. And now that doesn't mean that it comes without challenges. There's challenges, but man, it's super rewarding to see people, you know, learn and grow uh, in their investment company. So with anything, man, no decisions, finite, make a decision. That's your biggest key. So. I love it. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for being on the show. Super appreciate your time. And for everyone listening, thank you. We'll talk to you shortly. I appreciate it, Jason. Thanks, man.